Here's another thing I found at the RePC recently. Uh, someone out there probably recognizes this. I didn't, uh, certainly, when I was in the store. But the design was kind of striking. I, I was surprised by it. Uh, I've seen lots of little piece of shit clamshell devices. You know, little encyclopedias and spell checkers and uh, trans, you know, crap, junk. Um, stuff that some company made and they never even really intended for it to be a good product and, and then it wasn't. And, you know, looking at this, I saw a little FCC text just, just uh, silk screened on here and uh, the fact that it has no name I was thinking this was some AliExpress junk. And in RePC up here, uh, you can't get reception on your phone if you're on T-Mobile. So I couldn't look it up. So I just bought it, sight unseen. And then eventually I realized if you pop the battery, you find a brand. It's called a Zip-It uh, from Zip-It Wireless Inc. And I looked it up and I quickly learned that this is part of a class of instruments that was sold um, for quite some time. This is an instant messaging console. So this sort of thing was all the rage um, in a particular segment of the market for a bit. Basically once uh, portable devices that ran off lithium batteries had become popular, um, but before the smartphone had come out, no one knew what to do with this stuff. You know, they, they had portable microprocessors and flash memory and lithium ion batteries but uh, you didn't have any sort of real operating system on the go, and it was just, it was trouble. Um, devices like this were just, just thick on the ground. Now, if you don't believe me, I'll convince you. This guy here is another of the same ilk, and this one is a little quicker to explain. As you have probably surmised already, uh, this is an AOL Instant Messenger tablet. Uh, its only purpose in the world is to run AOL Instant Messenger. So I have thrown away the packaging for this so I can't show you the terrific marketing copy it came with, but uh, it's called the IM Free. And the concept is this, that circa, I don't know, probably like 2000 or something like that. Wait, is there a copyright date in this thing? 2002, 2003. Okay, so 2003, all right. Uh, if you're of an appropriate age, that is to say, if you're about four years younger than me, so if you're 25 or thereabouts. Something you might not know about, and I don't mean to speak down to you, but I just, I can't possibly, I, I can't overstate this. A lot of people only had one computer. I know I sound like Marty's family in Back to the Future, the, you know, oh, that's obvious. No, like, listen, the impact that this had on life was substantial. Um, Obviously, nowadays, you know, it's not uncommon to have multiple laptops and desktop computers in one household and smartphones and tablets and whatnot. But in uh, 2003, what you would have is an incredibly cursed object called the family computer. And I don't mean the Nintendo product. You would have a computer that was in the living room. It was in the kitchen. And so you'd have to go have your ERP in front of mom and just, you know, strategically minimize the window. Uh, at the appropriate times. And if you think I'm joking, you've got another thing coming. Uh, so this sucked, and apparently Motorola, and presumably AOL, I would guess they couldn't have made this without their, their involvement, uh, someone decided that it was a good idea to make something that would alleviate the situ... Oh, I'm being visited by a tiny spider. There is a tiny spider descending from my ceiling. Hey, buddy, I need you to go somewhere else. I'm going to go put you over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Run, 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 run. There you go. Someone decided that it was a good idea to uh, free people from the ball and chain of having to be on the family computer, especially because, you know, I am at the time was still sort of up and coming in, in kind of a way. And uh, it hadn't quite achieved the uh, get off the phone. I want to call Ashley sort of sitcom uh, level popularity of the telephone um, circa like, you know, the mid 80s. But uh, Certainly it was coming up in the world. So they had this brilliant idea, which is that you get this, and then you do your, your, your chatting on this, and the family computer would be free for other things. Okay, well, so is it Wi-Fi? No, there was no Wi-Fi in, in 2003. Of course there was Wi-Fi in 2003, but it didn't work, and it was expensive, and it would kill batteries, and so on. So what we had was, um, yeah, this. So this is a 
USB pendant. Uh, it transmits on God knows what frequency, God knows what protocol. I did open it up, and there's and no, nah. There's there's a there's a black blob in there, and um, an antenna, and that's it. So uh, basically, it was something like this. These used a proprietary, probably 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz protocol um, to speak to the base station. The base station, you know what? They might be, you know, these might be decked. If you're not familiar, decked is uh, actually a digital protocol invented in the the 90s. Uh, all the cordless phones started using it, and um, decked is actually uh, it was gonna be Wi-Fi at one point. We almost got Wi-Fi using the same protocol that the digital the cordless phones used. Um, but uh, that it never quite panned out, I think, because of uh, bandwidth issues. But um, this device uh, is a pretty good candidate for being being just a decked instrument. Uh, I do see a handheld ID, so that would stand to reason. Decked has uh, something like a something like an IMEI uh, sort of kind of thing um, to identify individual decked devices. So I'm guessing that uh, th that could very well be what this is. So. Um, Another thing reinforcing that is that you could connect, and I'll check the manual, but I think it's seven of these. Yeah, one base is capable of operating with up to seven handhelds simultaneously. And uh, my understanding, my recollection is that DEC is typically uh, limited to about that many. It's either seven or eight. And also, yep, there's a pairing process where you have to put in the ID for the base. So I'm thinking this is probably a, a, a DEC unit. So uh, anyway, so these guys would communicate back to the deck unit, and then there'd be a driver running on your PC that interpreted the uh, the signals from these and connected you to the AIM service. So uh, uh, you could go and do your ERP in another room and not tie up the computer so mom can get her recipes. And what I love about this thing, it's such a cursed object. It's got a who's on button. Uh, if you hold down the alt button, you can warn someone with space. I love that. It's not even in the menu, right? It was just assumed that like, it, you you got to have you got to be able to do this quickly, right? You go through your list, just warn, warn, warn. Next, warn, warn, warn. You, know, you got to make sure you uh, you keep a tight leash on all the motherfuckers trying to talk to you. There's also a talk button, uh, which presumably uh, would initiate a co conversation. Why send wasn't good enough for that? I don't know. Um, and a buy button, uh, also good for making telling everyone to fuck off at once. And then just a tremendous galaxy of uh, shortcut keys here. Now I don't have this thing working yet because uh, my Windows 98 system has uh, issues. I tried installing it and I had some problems, so I need to try it again later. And I'll probably do a video about that um, if I can get it working. Um, but the, okay, so the point is, these sort of things were really common. You know, we also got like the hip top and things like that a few years later. Um, this was just a market that really wanted to live. And uh, so this sort of thing was not uncommon. So this guy is a later variant of the same thing. It's definitely, I, I haven't gotten a date on it, but it's definitely uh, quite a bit newer. Um, and so, of course, that's not terribly interesting because all the services it connects to are down now. You know, it was, uh, it could do SMS, I think, with a, some sort of network service. It could do AIM, it could do MSN. All those are shut down. Um, but uh, I didn't know that, so I bought it anyway. And so I got it home, and the reason I didn't know that, I couldn't plug it in because it takes an incredibly tiny DC plug, as you can probably see, like, that thing is just, just sub-miniature. Uh, so I got it home and I went through, I've got something magical here, let me show you this. You see these? These are adapters that go from the standard 2.5 millimeter DC plug to every single thing in the world. Even these um, phone jacks got used for a little bit in the 80s in particular uh, for power, like for HP calculators fantastically useful uh, having those around for that pinch, right? Like, I'm never gonna remember to keep the power supplies around, but I can keep these things around. Um, it's also uh, all sizes, including that weird ass tapered one that uh, you get on some Japanese electronics. Um, center pins, little center pins. Uh, this guy's got, I think that's, I wanna say it's a Lenovo. Uh, Dell, Dell, uh, something else, Dell. Uh, just everything you could ask for. And I did, in fact, have a plug that would fit this. You can get these, by the way, on the internet. I'm not gonna drop any links, I don't give a shit, you can find them. Look up DC plug adapter, you'll find them. Um, so uh, when I plugged this in and opened it up, something magical happened. That's right. <laughs> not only does it run Linux, but uh, someone has uh, liberated it, as it were.
let's just clean that screen off a little bit. All right, now you'll see little tiny text. Let me get some less light in here. And there it is. Oh, there we go. After it boots up, there we go. It turns on the backlight and adjusts the font size and now it's a little more readable. Although uh, part of me kind of wishes that it actually stuck with the smaller font size. Now I hate Linux in a lot of ways. I've been using Linux since I was about 10 uh, and I find it a, a detestable experience. Um, but uh, I just could not, I, I couldn't help but, uh, I couldn't help but be entertained by this thing. It's just so charming, it's so small. Like if it's not clear, you know, there's my phone and here's this thing. So the screen on here is like, it's the size of like a Game Boy Advance screen. And in all honesty, it might literally be a Game Boy Advance screen. That, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, so what's neat about it is it's, it's actually fairly pleasant to use all things considered. Like you'd think this would be miserable, but it's not too bad, you know. Um, the things, the buttons are mapped sort of the way you'd think they would be. So uh, enter is, is enter. They didn't use any sort of wacky uh, key map. You can arrow around using the arrow keys. Uh, and then um, Alt is uh, your gives you your, your second row of uh, letters here and uh, characters. So uh, we can go here. Uh, we can go to uh, user. We can go to bin. You know, you can see this is this is doing not too bad. And then uh, if we want to get to you know the Alza tools, uh, check this out. I can do AL and then this here, this smiley face ripped off from the Macintosh, uh, is a tab. So I hit that a couple times. It's actually kind of a cute interface. I, I can't think of a better place to put tab, all things considered, uh, with the way you use it on Linux. The uh, control key, and that's the thing. Like You think it might not have a control key. That's a lot of the time what kills devices like this, makes them less interesting, is, is not being able to hit like control C. But no, this has it. I don't think this has the man. Yeah. And uh, the reason this, this doesn't have man is because this is a copy of OpenWRT, which a lot of you probably already know. That's the the Linux build for routers uh, and access points. And the reason for that is that this thing is based on a Marvell system on a chip. And uh, being that that's what's in a lot of routers, this was already ready to go. So this would have been the easiest way to get something into the, the little tiny bit of flash uh, memory that's available in this thing. Um, so it's a natural choice. Now, this is a very underloaded OpenWRT. I cannot get on the Wi-Fi because I don't understand how to work the CLI. On Linux, it's it's miserable if you're doing Wi-Fi. Um, in fact, I wonder if wlconfig is even on here. Nope. There's no wlconfig. It runs Ash, not Bash. More on that in a moment. Um, I cannot get the audio to work. It has a speaker and a uh, headphone jack, but I cannot get the audio to work. Um, I messed with it quite a bit, and it just it won't go. Um, I can't seem to get anything working on here, so I'm probably gonna have to uh, wipe the the memory and load up. A fresh copy of this because I think they've actually got X working on here now and as, as much as I despise Linux um, most of the time I just can't get old like look how cute this is I just love the idea of having a little not not only a little portable Linux tablet but in all honesty and, and frankness a, a little portable Linksys WRT 54G Wi-Fi router that I can just tote around now the sad thing by the way um, let me show you something about this so it has a memory card slot that takes micro SD, sorry, mini SD in fact. That's a cursed object. Haven't seen that in a while. Um, but uh, so I put a, a micro SD card in there and if you type mount um, it's actually kind enough to mount it for you. It's available in mount MMC block OP1. So if we pop over there uh, slash MNT slash tab enter then uh, it didn't mount. Oh, I know what's wrong. There's um, <laughs> there's a bit of a bug. Uh, if you take the card out and put it back in, it tries to remount over the same folder without unmounting it first. So you just unmount it, oops, then put it back in, and then it reappears, and there they are. And so I, I got myself a demo scene uh, sort of thing, a bash script that's actually an interactive uh, Flappy Bird knockoff, hypothetically. But unfortunately, as you've probably surmised by now, it doesn't run because there's no there's no bash. I wonder if Ash will run it. Yep, syntax error as expected. No C shell, no cache, nothing. So yeah, that's um, all I can do with it right now. If I get it doing more things, I'll make a video with it later and do something cute with it.
but uh, I just thought you'd be entertained by that. I have one more thing that I'm going to show you today. Uh, this is also a RePC acquisition, and this is something actually quite special. Um, I have not been able to get it working yet. I'll just uh, preface with that. Spoiler warning. But if I did have it working or if I can get it working, it's uh, very, very cool. So as you can probably surmise, it's a logging multimeter. So um, you take your, your inputs and this thing, you know, it's got a, a pen chart, right? How cool is that? Um, and uh, the problem is that uh, it doesn't go. It just really, really doesn't go. It doesn't go. It doesn't go. It just it doesn't. Uh, I can power it on, and sometimes I get noise on the screen, and sometimes I get sort of um, a whole bunch of just O's uh, on it, uh, or it flickers. And uh, I actually was able to get the service manual off of HP Agilent's archive website. Um, they you know they never throw anything away. Uh, it's listed as out of out of out of life out of lifespan you know they no longer support it obviously but um, they still provide the service manuals and with those you can repair these things when I say you can repair them like you can definitely repair them they've got full schematics and testing procedures and everything so I did go a little bit into it so uh, this is the instrument and uh, as you can see uh, the build is just impeccable and it uses what was a very typical design for the time uh, which would be uh, the mainframe style where you have um, a card down at the bottom um, which acts as uh, the motherboard and then plug-in cards for each of the functional modules. Now, uh, these would not necessarily have been things that you could use by themselves or that you would have replaced. Uh, the purpose of the mainframe design like this, more than anything, uh, was to make service easy because you could pop one of these cards out and work on it without having to tear apart the whole instrument. Um, it also meant that you could easily swap in a replacement card from a working one uh, to see if that resolved the issue. These are not necessarily discrete functions um, so much as they are uh, just you know, convenient ways to, to separate up the blocks of components to make assembly and diagnostics and, and repair easy. Uh, but they are beautiful boards. Um, it, you know, this was an era and a company in particular where everything was just made uh, in the most <laughs> striking way. I love these old ICs with the ceramic carriers. They're fantastic. Um, I don't have a date on this thing, but I'd place it somewhere in the 70s given the plastic uh, chip carriers uh, on most of the components. Um, I could be wrong about that. I have to look it up. But and then this guy, I love the lack of solder mask uh, just leaving the the gold traces exposed across the board it's just really beautiful all this almost certainly hand-drawn traces I love the like the bank of resistors here that crosses the whole highway of traces and so on you know, each one of these things is just a, a work of art one of my other favorite things in this is the uh, the IC sockets for the larger wide dip chips are bright red. I don't know why they did that. Um, you know, black was common at the time. It sure is a, a quite a, a power play, stylistically speaking though. Now, I have already done some preliminary diagnostics on this. Um, just the most basic thing, check the voltages, and I, I did get some results from that. Um, the voltages are actually specified along the top of this card here. And just look at how polite HP is. They just, they label them all right there. It's not just test point one, test point two. So we got 875 VCVG ground, and then 2.6 and minus seven. And I found that everything was working uh, fine, except for the, uh, I believe, plus seven, which was actually outputting five, and that doesn't make any sense. It was either five or it was negative two. I can't remember which. So there's a short somewhere. It's got to be, and uh, I have not yet found it, but... There's a possibility. I might just look for another one of these and just replace this board. The other thing is, uh, you look down in here, you can see this guy's just floating. It seems that the plastic standoffs that held it in place uh, just sort of crumbled over time. Presumably, uh, just early plastics just given up the ghost. So, uh, hopefully time has not eaten this one, because again, if I can get it working, um, I'd love to demonstrate it on video. There's a number of cool things you can do with this. 
and it's just an intrinsically uh, very neat piece of equipment, but, um, you know, we'll see. Oh, whoops. I should probably actually put the card in before I try and put the case back on. So that's it. Uh, that's all I've got for today. Uh, you know, I just wanted to check in and, and just show you some of the, the interesting things I've gotten lately. Um, I should be doing some more comprehensive videos in the near future on things. Uh, the one thing that's frustrating is, uh, I don't know if you can tell this, but to me, the quality of this camera is just very, very poor. Uh, I didn't really realize it until I owned it for a while and shot a lot of videos on it, but uh, I find the noise floor on it to just be very frustratingly high, and I don't like the color rendition, and I don't like the dynamic range. There's a lot of things I don't like about it, um, and I don't like uh, the, <laughs> the battery technology. I don't like a lot of things. Uh, it also has no remote, so it's, it's frustrating trying to do zooms um, when I'm shooting stuff uh, like this. It, it's just, um, it's a huge pain in the ass. So I'm thinking about trying to get a new camera. Um, I might actually uh, put out a you know call to see if anybody's interested in donating to get me a better camera under the promise that I will start delivering more and better videos uh, once I get it. Uh, this one just sort of killed my enthusiasm because I compared it to my uh, Fuji um, a mirrorless uh, a digital camera and uh, the quality there was just so outstanding it, it just got really hard to to look at this uh, the next time I went to shoot I just looked at it just oh I just felt gross unclean um, I can't believe this thing is 1080p and I'm in a very well lit room I've got tons of lighting in here and I'm still getting this, this awful noise so um, that's a bit of what's been hanging me up that and just being sad so um, hopefully this will uh, mark the end of my uh, long hiatus uh, from this and uh, I hope uh, to see a lot of the new uh, followers I've gotten on YouTube since last time I posted a video. I uh, hope to see you all in uh, the next video I post which will hopefully be a lot more focused and a lot less rambly than this one. So, uh, But nonetheless I, I hope you had a good time and uh, look forward to um, these things appearing again in future videos. Thank you and have a good night.